Good afternoon, guys. Uh, today, we're going to work on the reproductive system. And you know, reproductive system has two parts. One is male reproductive system, and another is female reproductive system. But today, we're going to cover the male reproductive system. So in the male reproductive system, I will go over the testis and the process of sperm formation called spermatogenesis. We will talk about male reproductive ducts and then male reproductive accessory glands. And at the end, we will talk about the male organ phallus, the penis. And in the female reproductive system, which we will go over next uh, on Wednesday. Uh, I will go over ovaries and oogenesis. The duct, which is the uterine tubes, the uterus, the menstruation cycle, and then we'll also talk about the external genitalia, which calls the vulva, like external feature as well as some internal organ like the cervix, vagina, and the female breast, okay? The primary sex organ for the male reproductive system is the testis. There are two testis in either side of the scrotum and in the female, that is the ovary. So a male is male because male has testis and testis produce testosterone. A female is a female because female has ovaries and ovaries produce ovarian hormones like estrogen and progesterone, which are the sex steroids and that makes female female. Both male and female, apart from their primary sex organs, they have some other accessory helping sex organs. And they are either glands or ducts or the external genitalia, which you can see from outside, okay? I will go over those all primary and secondary organs, but most importantly in male reproductive system, the main part is you need to focus on the testis. What is the structure of the testis? What is the gross anatomy of the testis? And what is the microscopic anatomy of the testis? Okay. So, <clears throat> Let's start with the scrotum. The scrotum is made up of a skin and superfi superficial fascia, which surrounds your testis. And testis positioned outside your body cavity. That's why testis is hanging in the sac of scrotum so that it can provide an environment which is three degrees centigrade, cooler than body temperature, three degrees centigrade. Let's me go over and write it down. So this is three degree centigrade, cooler than body temperature. In the scrotum, there are layers of smooth muscles which co uh, covers the testis. And that muscle is called dartus muscle. Then there is another skeletal muscle, which is the cremasteric muscles. So when voluntary, you lift your testis up, that is the action of cremasteric muscles. And when there is hot, your testis hangs down. That is the relaxation of involuntary or smooth muscles, that is dartus muscle. When it is cold, to maintain temperature of the testis, testis is pulled up due to the contraction of dartus muscle, okay? So there are two muscles, dartus muscle and cremaster muscles in the 
testes and you know their function and what kind of muscles they are, okay? Okay, so this is here. A gentleman is standing and you have cut in the mid sagittal. So you have divided an individual in right and left half. And this is frontal anterior region and this is posterior region of the body. And you are looking from the right side towards the left half of the body, medial half of the body. And then you look with the male reproductive system organs. So what are the male reproductive system organs? Let's start with the primary sex organ in male. So what is the primary sex organ in male? Someone please. Testes. Testes. So here we start from the testes, which is covered by scrotum. You can see there is a skin, the genital is here. And then there is several muscles, fascia, fat, connective tissue, everything covering here. And then you have testis. Testis, you can see there is a lot of blood vessels, highly vascular. And then testis is made up of small, tiny tubes. We call them seminiferous tubules and other connective tissue. Those tubes mix a sperm and some fluid that passes through the another you know, comma-shaped coiled tubes. That tube is called See from here to here, epididymis. So epididymis carry some testicular fluid and sperm and then bring it back through the another duct, muscular duct tube that is called vas deferens or ductus deferens. Ductus, ductus deferens is still outside the abdominal cavity in the inguinal canal and it is passing through the a cord which cord contains a lot of blood vessels, artery, nerve, vein, lymphatic vessel. And that cord is called? Anyone? Spermatic cord. Sperm spermatic cord, very good. That is spermatic cord carry every tubular structure, blood vessel, lymphatic vessels, and other stuff, including the ductus difference or vas difference. Then through the inguinal canal, it enters in the pelvic cavity. And then it goes on and above the urinary bladder and slightly on the side. It hooks around the ureter and then it's slightly enlarged in diameter. And that enlarged part of the ductus deferens or vas deferens is called ampulla of ductus deferens. This ductus deferens again becomes a small duct. And that duct is joined by another seminal gland or seminal vesicle, which makes secretion which adds to the semen. When the seminal vesicle or seminal glands joins the ampulla of ductus deferens duct, we call that combined duct as ejaculatory duct. And ejaculatory duct runs through the prostate gland in male. Prostate gland is, if you see, let's see, if this my pain is the urethra coming from the urinary bladder in male, my fist around the urethra will be prostate gland. That's how you need to remember 3D orientation of the structure in the male. Are you following me? So it is under the urinary bladder encircling the urethra and ejaculatory duct. Now, once ejaculatory duct joins here, the urethra inside the prostate gland, which is called prostatic urethra, then it exits from the urethra and it passes through 
the layers of pelvic floor muscle that is called, what is that called? That is called urogenital, urogenital diaphragm. So diaphragm is like a layer which separates two areas. So this is separating the pelvic cavity from outside the body, okay? So urogenital diaphragm is layers of muscle, several layers of muscle. And when this urethra runs through the urogenital diaphragm, the, we change the name of the urethra. And that part of the urethra is called Membranous urethra. Membranous urethra, very good. Membranous urethra, okay? And membranous urethra is like just this small area. Membranous urethra is the smallest, smallest length of all the urethra. Now, once membranous urethra exit from the urogenital diaphragm, then it is joined by another you know, pea-sized gland which is called bulbo urethral gland. This gland joins the urethra. The bulbo urethral gland secrete mucus, which is rich in bicarbonate, okay? The purpose of bulbo urethral gland is to clean the trace amount of urine which are lying in the penile urethra or a spongy urethra because this path is the common path for both a sperm and the urine. So a sperm comes sometime, but urine comes every time. So if you, let's see, once you urinate, there are trace amount of urine in the urethra. And if a sperm pass through that urine in the urethra, then due to the hypotonic action and due to acidic action, urine can kill the sperm easily. That's why cleaning happens before sperm can pass through the urethra, okay? Now the next part of the urethra is called the, uh, the, the spongy urethra or penile urethra. So spongy urethra is also called penile urethra, okay? Because it runs through the penis and it runs through the corpus spongiosum of the penis. Penis has two erectile tissue, corpus spongiosum and corpus cavernosum. We're gonna talk about that later. So now penis has urethral, external urethral opening and then there is glans penis and prepuce. When you remove this prepuce, that is called circumcision. For male vasectomy, we cut this vas difference and tie them either side so that sperm and semen will not travel from the testis to the ejaculate reduct and outside the penis. And that is called male sterilization, or we call them vasectomy, vas means vas difference, Ectomy means cut, okay? So these are the male reproductive system organs. This is the diagram where anterior part of the male genitalia has removed to sew and expose the the base of the penis and the scrotum and the spermatic cord, okay? So as I said earlier, let's talk about first the scrotum. Scrotum has the outermost layer, the skin. Then you have superficial fascia. The superficial fascia is connective tissue which contains a lot of fat and the dense irregular connective tissue. 
inside the superficial fascia, we have external, external spermatic fascia, another layer of connective tissue. And deep to the external spermatic fascia, there is cremasteric muscle. Cremasteric muscle is the skeletal muscle or a smooth muscle? Skeletal. Skeletal muscle. And the darter's muscle, which is superficial in the scrotum is a smooth muscle, okay? Now let's go deep to the cremasteric muscle. Then you see another layer, the white layer, the internal spermatic fascia. Internal spermatic fascia is the fascia which covers the spermatic cord, inner to the spermatic cord. And deep to internal spermatic fascia, there is two layers of another white connective tissue that is called tunica vaginalis. Pay attention here. Do you remember the kidney? Kidney is developed embryologically in your abdominal cavity. And so does testis. Testis later, before birth, it descend from the abdominal cavity and sit here in the scrotal sac. So when testis descend, it descend with peritoneum. So there is double layer of, double layer of peritoneum which comes from the abdomen with the testis, you see? That's why outside the testis, you have two layers of peritoneum from peritoneum, you see? What is that two layers called? Tunica vaginalis. <laughs> Tunica vaginalis is the sac. And the space there is potential black space between these Tunica vaginalis, okay? So if you, some people build a fluid in this tunica vaginalis, and that is called hydrocele. So hydrocele is accumulation of fluid in the tunica vaginalis space. Have you heard about hydrocele? Hydro means water. Seal means cyst, swelling. Okay. So water build up here. Let me ask you a question. If you build up water for a long time, what happens? That will give pressure to your testis. And that will pull this spermatic cord. If it pulls the spermatic cord, that can cause pain because you are pulling the testis downwards. At the same time, if you have fluid buildup around the testis, can you maintain three degree cooler temperature all the time in the testis? No. That's why there is chance that you will reduce the spermat spermatogenesis. Okay. Inside the tunica vaginalis, we have testis, epididymis, and then this epididymis comes above through the vast difference. And you see in the cord, there is vast difference. There is all these blood vessel, pampiniform plexus of testicular veins, testicular artery, autonomic nerve fibers, ductus difference here. And total is a spermatic cord, and then through the superficial inguinal ring, it enters inside. When you cut the penis, you see penis has also around skin, and then there is dorsal vein, dorsal artery, and then there are three group of three group of erectile tissue, which is also very vascular. The blue things you see are the veins. Upper two group are called corpus cavernosa, and the lower one is called carpus spongiosum. Urethra runs through this 
corpus spongiosum in the penis. That's why we call it spongy urethra. Okay. Okay, so testes are enclosed in a serous sac, tunica vaginalis, tunica albuginia. Let's see here now. Tunica albuginia. So now deep to the tunica vaginalis, there is another white layer of connective tissue, which are fibrous capsule of the testes. And this tunica albuginia divide each testis into 250 to 300 lobules. Okay. Those lobules contain one to four coiled seminiferous tubules. Okay. And then epididymis is the common septic structure on the posterior testis. So you can see here, we have removed tunica vaginalis. Sorry, not to remove tunica vaginalis. You have kept here tunica vaginalis and deep to the tunica vaginalis, we have white layer that is called tunica albuginia. You see here. Now tunica albuginia, is the outermost connective tissue, white connective tunic. Albuginia means white, albicans, albuginia. This tissue invaginate inside the testis and divide the testis into compartment. Each compartment is called a lobule of the testis. You see the lobule of the testis. Each lobule contains two to four coiled small tubes and those tubes are called seminiferous tubules, similar tubes we had in the kidney. And that was called? Portal triad? Uh, not the portal triad. Yeah. Uriniferous tubules? Uriniferous tubules, yes. That is called uriniferous tubules, okay? Uh, now, so let's see when these tubes inside the scrotum, when these tubes makes a sperm inside their lumen, then it pass to the straight tubule. Straight tubules carry to the rete testis. Rete testis then take to the head of epididymis. And then from the epididymis, it runs across through the ductus difference in the spermatic cord. So we're gonna talk about now the histology of the testis. So 70 ferrous tubules, let's see Seminiferous tubules are separated from each other by areolar connective tissue. And then if you cut each tube, then you're gonna see epithelium of the seminiferous tubules. And epithelium contains, uh, contains spermatogenic cells and columnar sustentacular cells, okay? They are also called supporting cells. So let's see here. Let me go back and show you. So if I take here and cut here, if I cut anywhere tube here and then magnify it, how are we gonna see? Okay. So let's see here is another cell and here is another cell, like tube. And then this is interstitial space outside the tube. So this tube has a space in the center. Yep. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna go outside the tube and then see these structures, okay? Get the orientation. Yeah. 
So this is testis. Seminiferous tubules in cross section. So we have cut seminiferous tubules. If you are oriented, you will answer correctly here. In this diagram, how many full seminiferous tubules you can see? Full cross section of how many seminiferous tubules? Two. Three. 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 How many partial? Two. Two. Okay. So here, this is one seminiferous tubules. This is the lumen of the seminiferous. Here is another seminiferous tubules and lumen, another here. And this is partial another, this is partial another. This is the space, it is outside the tubule. Okay. So let's talk about first the seminiferous tubules. This is the wall of the seminiferous tubule and here is lumen, seminiferous tubules epithelium. This is the seminiferous tubules. And this is tunica albuginea, which is outside the tube. And the cell which is outside the tube that is called interstitial tissue or lydic tissue. If you look carefully inside the uh, testis, you will see testis has two compartments. One is outer compartment, or we call it tubular compartment. And there is extra tubular comp compartment, which is the interstitial tissue. Before we go to next slide, the seminiferous tubules epithelium contains spermatogonic cells and some supporting cells on the side. So if you see these cells, some of them are cells which can make a sperm. They are stem cells for the sperm. Some of the cells are non-sperm forming cells. They are surrounding the sperm forming cells and help them to make a sperm. Clear? Some cells in the wall is called myoid cells which contract and help a sperm to move in the lumen of the seminiferous tubules. Outside the tubules, there is interstitial tissue. These tissues are called lydic tissue or lydic, they contains lydic cells or interstitial cells. These cells are endocrine glands and they produce testosterone, okay? So let's talk about how stem cells or spermatogonic cells or spermatogonia in the wall of seminiferous tubule makes a sperm. That process is called spermatogenesis or sperm formation process. 400 million sperm formed per day. And that begins only at puberty. You get those primitive sperm cells or primordial sperm cells during the fetal life of like 12 weeks, okay? It takes around 75 days to complete formation of one spermatozoa. And then it moved towards the lumen, okay? So let's see here. Spermatogenesis divided into three states, okay? Stage one, stage two, and stage three. Stage one is spermatogonia divided by mitosis. I'm gonna go and explain about it in diagram. That will be easy. So I'm gonna give just, so in the wall, there is a spermatogonic cells in the wall of seminiferous tubules. Those cells in the wall, so let's see if there is one cell, they divide into two. One remain in the middle of the tube wall and one goes back to the outside of the 
tubular wall. Okay, so type A, when they stage one spermatogonia divide by mitosis and makes two type A and type B. Type B moves towards the lumen of the seminiferous tubules, whereas type A remain in the outer side of the seminiferous wall, tubule wall, and they maintain germ cell layer. Now type B cells get into stage two. And in stage two, there is meiosis one and meiosis, meiosis one and meiosis two. What happens in meiosis one? From type B spermatogonia, which is called primary spermatocyte, we make secondary spermatocytes. And from secondary spermatocyte in meiosis two, we make spermato spermatids. So from each spermatocyte, we make two spermato spermatids. So what do you see from here to here? Like you have one spermatogonia, you divide into two, you keep one in the wall, and one makes four spermatids. You are not losing a single cell, but you are making four spermatids. So this looks like the sperm forming process is like never ending, okay? From four spermatids, we make four spermatozoa and that process is called spermiogenesis. Sometimes we divide spermatogenesis into early spermatogenesis and late spermatogenesis. Late spermatogenesis is also called spermiogenesis. So what happens in the spermiogenesis? The four spermatids, these haploid daughter cells, differentiate into spermatozoa. Spermatozoa has head, midpiece, and tail, and cap of enzyme on the head. Okay? Spermatozoa is formed from spermatid by losing their cytoplasm. You're gonna see that now. So from here, you need to close your eyes and visualize in the wall of the seminiferous tubules. In the wall of the seminiferous tubule, you have a stem cells of the sperm and that is called Come on. Spermatocytes. The cells which are in the wall of seminiferous tubules, which are gonna make spermatozoa later. The earliest stage of that cell is called? Spermatogonia. Spermatogonia, good. So let's see here now. Number one, two, three, four, five, six. So how you form? Spermatozoa from spermatids. So let's see if this is spermatids here. These are the spermatids. Spermatids are haploid cells. That means they have half number of chromosome. That means only 23 chromosomes not 23 pairs. So you see it has nucleus, it has organelles, it has cytoplasm. Then in stage two, there is like centrioles form. There's Golgi apparatus, apparatus. Centrioles are formed from the centrioles. What happened? Centrioles are the microtubules made up of microtubules and microfilaments. So the slowly microtubules develop, they make flagellum. They develop their mitochondria. You see all the mitochondria is coming towards the mid piece and tail. Slowly nucleus becomes the head and acrosome is kind of enzymes, which is a hydrolytic glycolytic enzymes which makes the hole in the egg. And then these mitochondria moves towards the mid piece. And this excess cytoplasm is eaten up by 
the supporting cells which is lying on the either side of the spermatogonic cells. And then you see number five, losing excess cytoplasm, and then head and mid piece and tail of the spermatozoa. So this is the only region where you find mitochondria, not in the head region. That's why when you get, when this sperm penetrate an egg during fertilization, only head get inside the egg. The mid piece and tail remains outside. That's why you don't get any piece of mitochondria from your dad. You get only your mom's mitochondria. Okay, again, same thing here. 70 tubules and spermatogenesis. So this is the wall of the 70 tubules. You have connective tissue, basal lamina. And in the wall you have there is spermatogonium stem cells one, two n. Two n means diploid cells. You know diploid cells. You know haploid and diploid. Yes. Diploid cells means the cells with how many chromosomes? Twenty-three pairs. Pairs. Twenty-three pairs. So this cell, spermatogonium, in the wall of seminiferous is 46 chromosome or 23 pairs. They divide into two daughter cells by mitosis with the same number of chromosome from 2N to 2N. What happens among these two? One copy moves towards the lumen where spermatogonia is in the same location. Are you following me? Let's see if this is, you know the cell here lying on the side of this spermatogonia, another cell is lying on the side of spermatogonia. What will be these cells? Haploid? No, 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 no. What will be these cells? You know, in the wall of the seminiferous tubules, either side of the spermatogonia, there is cells supporting them. Supporting cells. Sartori cells. Sartori cells or supporting cells. Okay. So these cells are supporting cells. Okay. So now. Either side, the supporting cells are helping here. You're gonna see in next slide. Now after mitosis, daughter cell type B spermatogonium, which is moving towards the lumen of the seminiferous tubules, becomes primary spermatocytes and enter into Meiosis cell division, part one, meiosis one. So here, from here, it is happening like it is growing in size, synthesizing more protein, more uh, carbohydrate, fat, and increasing in size. Then uh, the meiosis one completes, and then it forms secondary spermatocytes. So it is secondary spermatocyte, which is haploid. You see, yen, only one yen, not two yen. That is called secondary spermatocytes. And from here to here, you know this is the area where in prophase stays, you have crossing over. So when they divide, there is random assortment of the genetic component from each pair of the chromosomes. And then they divide with highly mix and create the path for genetic variation. Okay? 
Now, after the secondary spermatocyte is formed, then meiosis second start where these daughter cells just multiply and they synthesize the DNA and create similar copy of each side and mix two from one. So total number of four early spermatids are formed. This process you can call early spermatogenesis from here to here. See, masses, early spermatogenesis. And then from here, it is called late spermatogenesis or we call them spermiogenesis. Okay, so as I said earlier, this is the seminiferous tubules. This is the spermatogonies, two spermatogonic cells you can see here, one is spermatogonic cells here. So this is basal lamina again. This is the spermatogonia stem cell. And this cell then divide into type A and type B. Type A moves again towards the lumen. Type B comes down and goes all the way to form the spermatogoa. As I said earlier, each spermatogonia is covered by a large supporting cells, you see. This is the nucleus of the sustentacular or supporting cells. These two cells have tight junction, you see. That tight junction does not allow anything to move or anything to cross from this cell to the sperm. These cells also protect the sperm because the sperm is like a foreign body for our body. They are haploid. Haploid is not the normal thing in the body. If somehow our immune system like white blood cell reach here, they're gonna kill this sperm easily. That's why there is tight junction between the sustentacular cells to protect the the spermatogonium. These cells also does a lot of other function. They produce some protein which protect them from phagocytes. They also pro uh, produce inhibin, which uh, not inhibin, yeah, inhibin, which help uh, in the regulation of hormone. They also produce androgen binding protein, which increase concentration of testosterone in this area which is essential for spermatogenesis, but that is the part of physiology. So I don't want to go there. Okay, so sustentacular cells are the myoid cells and interstitial cells. So let me tell you here, the large nuclear cell is called sustentacular cell. Similarly, there are some other cells on the side that is called myoid cells. So what are the function of those cells? Sustentacular or cells and myoid cells surrounds the spermatogonic cell extend from basal lamina up to the lumen. That is long cells, okay? Tight junction between cells are called blood testis barrier. They assist sperm production. They secrete testicular fluid and androgen binding protein. Androgen binding protein increase androgen like testosterone so that spermatogenesis will occur. And some myoid cells also on the side of seminiferous tubules, they contract rhythmically. So seminiferous tubules squeeze the semen and fluid towards the vast difference. On the other hand, interstitial lytic cells. These cells are inside in the wall of tubules or outside the seminiferous tubules. Outside. Outside and they are called lytic cells. They secrete testosterone. They are controlled by luteinizing hormone from interior pituitary gland. Okay, so now the easy parts of the reproductive system. 
epididymis is duct of epididymis around six meter long. It is the length of your body, pretty much, more than that, if you uncoil them. Why you coil them? So that when a sperm exit from testis, a sperm is immortal. It cannot move. The movement and capacitation, like not capacitation, the movement and motility of the sperm is achieved in the epididymis as well as in the vast difference. Their wall had some smooth muscle and pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. They have cilia, and these cilia are immortal and long microvilli that help sperm to move. It takes 20 day journey for a sperm to move through the epididymis and gains the ability to swim and fertilize an egg through a chrosomal reaction. A chrosomal reaction means they develop some caps, some enzymes on the way. See here, this is the epididymis. It takes 20 days they spend. How long is total life to make? How long does it take? 75 days. Uh, out of 75, 25 days they spend here. Ductus difference stores and transport is sperm. And histology of the ductus difference is same way. There is epithelium, so you stratified columnar. There is thickus muscularis. And always outside is adventitia. Then next organ is seminal vesicles. Spermatic cord, we talked about it earlier, contains ductus difference, testicular blood vessels, autonomic and sensory nerves, superior portion of the ductus difference, and they runs through the inguinal ligaments. So you see spermatic cord. See? So when the doctor finds this cord, if they want to do the vasectomy, they have to find this slippery. This, when you hold this spermatic cord, it slips easily from the finger pinch. And you have to cut here, open it, and take out the vas difference and then cut it. Sometimes through this inguinal clan where the spermatic cord is running, they are not like a strong, so they are like pat, uh, they, they lose. And then they have a hole through that, some intestinal organ can herniate, and that is called hernia, inguinal hernia. Urethra carries a sperm from ejaculatory. Did we talk about a sperm? Okay, let's talk about the urethra. So urethra, you know, in male, urethra has three parts. The area which is running through the prostate gland is prostatic urethra. And the length of the urethra, which is running through the spongy urethra is called spongy, I'm sorry. The length of the urethra, which is running through the urogenital diaphragm is called membranous urethra. And the urethra in the penis, which runs through the corpus spongiosum tissue in the penis is called spongy urethra. So here, this is the urethra and this is longitudinal section and you are looking from the inferior side, posterior inferior. So this area is prostatic urethra, spongy urethra, sorry, membranous urethra and the spongy urethra. And here you can see corpus cavernosa and corpus spongiosum. See seminal vesicle joining the prostatic 
the, the ampoule of the ductus deferens, and then they form ejaculatory duct. Let's talk about the accessory glands in the male reproductive system. So the number one and the largest gland is the seminal vesicle. They lie on the posterior surface of the urinary bladder near the ureter in the line with the ductus deferens. They secrete about 60% of the volume of semen. Semen contains, seminal vesicle fluid contains fructose and fructose is the simple sugar, which is the main nutrition for the sperm. To make ATP to move and swim, sperm needs source of energy and that is fructose. It also produces some substances to enhance sperm mobility from the uh, seminal vesicle. It produces some prostaglandins, substance that suppress immune response against semen and enzyme that initially clot the semen and when it outside through the ejaculation then that same chemical compound liquefy the semen. Okay. Another accessory glands in the male reproductive system is prostate gland that encircle, prostate gland encircles the prostatic urethra and it consists of 20 to 30 compound tubular alveolar glands. They secrete about 20 to 30% of seminal fluid. So it also adds fluids to the semen and secrete about, yeah, that 20 to 30% of seminal fluid. And it also enhance sperm motility and liquid clot and liquefy the semen uh, when they need, okay? Bulbourethral gland, you know, that's the pea size small gland which produce mucus to clean and neutralize the urine inside the urethra. Penis, external anatomy, it has shaft, it has glands penis and it has prepuce. So here you go. This is the skin here, that is the prepuce. When you remove this skin, that condition is called circumcision, okay? And this is the corpus cavernosa and corpus spongiosum. So what we did today, we have talked about the organs of the male reproductive system. There mainly we focused on the testis and the function of the testis is spermatogenesis. And you saw male can produce unlimited amount of sperm. And male can produce sperm varyingly with the age. That's why, and you know why male can produce unlimited of number of sperm, because they divide one cell and keep one inside and the same cell act as next time spermatogonium. Okay. So there's always that, like a reservoir? Yes. So that's why they're saying a single man can fertilize whole world if all the sperm is viable to fertilize the egg. Okay. With that, this is all. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I have a quick question, Professor. Uh -huh. So I understand that a lot of the infertility comes from the male 